Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 20th, 2022, around 2.45 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including two tropical cyclones in the East Pacific, and we also could be looking at a tropical cyclone forming in the main development region within the next couple of weeks. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, first of all, we noticed that we have the remnants here of Invest Area 93L, this larger area of energy. 93L is actually over Mexico, but some of the remnant energy is still left over here in the Yucatan Peninsula. And there is still some associated shower and thunderstorm activity. So still the potential for gusty winds, heavy rainfall and mudslides, uh, along with the very dangerous threat of flash flooding. We have Tropical Depression Celia over here in the East Pacific Basin. This is likely to become a hurricane over the next several days as it kind of traverses on the same path as uh, blasted. We have a tropical wave here in the MDR, and then we'll be watching for development coming off the coast of Africa here over the next couple of weeks. And uh, really within about a week or two, we could see a development out in this region. So real quick look here in the East Pacific Basin. Again, we have tropical or actually now the remnants of blasts. It is now a post-tropical cyclone, so no more advisories are being issued. Then we have Tropical Depression Celia. This will be moving off towards the north and west over the next couple of days. And this is expected to become a hurricane, but well offshore of Mexico. And this is not expected to be much of a significant concern for that area. And in the Atlantic Basin, we are all quiet, at least for the next five days. But there is some signs of things coming down the pipeline. So let's go ahead and talk about those. Take a look here at the GFS forecast. This is the 850 millibar vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, for context here, this is actually tropical depression Celia over here. And we'll back this up. So if you really want to see a, a, a good looking storm, a healthy storm, this is what you want to see right here. That is the remnants of hurricane blast just a couple of days ago on the model. And we'll bring this forward in time. Now, we noticed that today there is a tropical wave off of Africa right here. Now, this tropical wave is not what we're going to be watching. This one is not what we're going to be watching here. It's actually another wave that is expected to emerge off of Africa here. And we notice on the GFS forecast, this actually emerges pretty low to the south, it looks like. This is uh, roughly at about six to seven degrees north, uh, but it eventually does kind of gain some latitude and some energy does try to break off of there, uh, you know, after a couple of days here. This is in about a week's time. And once this wave emerges, we'll be traversing westernly. Some energy breaks off. And that's where development is certainly possible. Now, on the GFS forecast, we actually don't see anything develop here. One of the reasons for that, if we jump up to the relative humidity, this is the associated tropical wave right here that's trying to close off into a cyclone. But if you kind of notice here, all this dry air to the north, this is actually getting forced around this big ridge of high pressure. And again, this big ridge of high pressure, it's a clockwise flow, and that's dry air being uh, in just basically ingested into this in entire region. So really is not going to allow for much to develop with constant dry air intrusions. And the other problem here is if we take a look at the upper level wind environment, there is actually somewhat of a favorable upper level wind environment at this time. There is a decent upper level anticyclone, but you kind of notice that there will be some of these easterly winds here that will be trying to basically blow in, in the kind of the mid levels. Those mid level uh, easternlies will be trying to enforce a lot of dry air but there is some outflow and somewhat of an anticyclonic pattern here, which may go to favor tropical genesis, but it's really going to have a hard time with stability down there. And on the European forecast here, it's kind of much of the same story. The European forecast here, in fact, you know, tries to do something. I mean, this is our 192. This is nearing Trinidad and Tobago and is crossing through the Lesser Antilles and it's moving into the Caribbean thereafter the european tries to suggest some development but another problem with that is the relative humidity um you can just see that there's you know plenty of dry air being blasted in on on the you know all sides here and any cyclonic circulation that forms here is going to attempt to wrap around this dry air and you notice here this is only in the 700 to 300 millibar range but if we jump down and look at the 850 winds here 
we notice that we have about 30 knots of wind. So that's about 35 to 40 miles per hour. So that's some very strong trade winds blowing across this region. And what that's not going to allow is a storm to close off. And we've seen that time in and time out. The icon uh, forecast, though, does go for a closed circulation here by, uh, you know, 12 Z Monday on the 27th. So we'll be watching that very closely. Uh, but that will be something that we're going to have to monitor over the next couple of days. In the sea surface temperature realm, well, again, we noticed that most of the Atlantic Basin, including the southwestern Atlantic and near the islands, everywhere in here is primed and ready to go. Anomalies are generally running above the long-term average in most locations. And then we have this subtropical cooling, and that's going to allow for the main development region to take over. As we head in towards the peak of the hurricane season, we notice that the sea surface temperatures are very warm in the Gulf of Mexico. And in fact, here we notice that there's actually about 30 to 31 degrees Celsius waters up near the coast of Louisiana at the moment. And uh, really elsewhere, about 27, 28 Celsius all through in here. And there's a very substantial uh, loop current right now that's in the central and eastern Gulf. And this is really going to play a factor because it's amplifying heat and uh, water, you know, warm water depth. And so if we were to get a system that travels through this region, that definitely could be a sign of some impending trouble as we, you know, progress. But you need a system to take advantage of that first. And luckily, we don't have that at the moment. Now, what does this all lead to? Well, basically, again, we've had generally higher pressures up to the north up here, and that has resulted in lower sea surface temperature or lower trade winds out here down in the deep tropics. That has led to increased warming uh, of the deep tropics while simultaneously the you know North Atlantic and the subtropical you know regions have significantly cooled, and that's because of this big old high pressure up to the north. And that has led to that uh, cooling uh, in the north and warming in the south. And basically what this also does, we have low-level westerly winds uh, that are coming in here. We have low-level westerlies and upper-level easterlies. Now, in the low levels, westerlies are good, but westerlies are not good in the upper levels. So the fact that we have easterly winds in the upper levels, that's very significant. This generally creates this background cyclonic uh, favorability here in the Atlantic, and that leads to increased favorability for storms to go on to develop. And that's certainly something that we're kind of looking at once again, is that we've had these anomalous westerly winds uh, in the tropical Atlantic over the last couple of weeks, and that's expected to continue. This increases the background favorability and increases chances for tropical cyclones to form. But with this increased warming in the tropical Atlantic and cooling in the North Atlantic, this also creates here where there's going to be some interesting consequences as a result of all of these changes here. In the North Atlantic and the upper levels, we're expected to have a big ridge of high pressure that is expected to be moving across over the, the next couple of months from the Canadian prairies and basically just set up across the North Atlantic. And that generally helps to steer storms further westward with time. And we've seen this in cases like 2017 uh, and even 2018 to an extent with Hurricane Florence, uh, that this big ridge of high pressure really matters because it steers storms generally more westernly. Now, that's not to say that you can't get a storm that comes out here and turns out harmlessly to sea because it definitely can still happen. It kind of depends on the individual storm and on individual you know, dynamics that are, that are going on. Uh, but generally speaking, this bigger ridge of high pressure is expected to set up, and we can see that in the, the uh, CANSIPS forecast here. This is a climate model, uh, and we're going to run it out here. This is valid for August uh, of 2022, so really kind of starting to get to the peak of the hurricane season. We notice this big ridge of high pressure up towards the north, and that's basically this big old high out here that doesn't really allow for storms to recurve as easily and you know turn harmlessly away from from you know any land. Um, and then by September, we have that that ridge kind of amplifies out here, and that's generally a pattern that seems to favor more threats towards you know, the Lesser Antilles, the Caribbean, Florida, the United States East Coast, and even to, to a certain degree, the United States Northeast Coast as well. I mean, really anywhere that could be impacted by a hurricane has at least some chance. Um, and Colorado State University did, you know, pr put out a, a pretty grim, 
you know, picture per se that, you know, Florida and, you know, the Gulf Coast states are at, again, an above average chance of getting hit this year by at least a tropical storm, uh, if not a hurricane or potentially even a major hurricane. So there's definitely some interesting potentials with that as we move forward with time. All right, so now's the time to prepare again, not to worry, not to be scared or anything, but now's the time to generally prepare and uh, we're going to get through this hurricane season and you know everything will be good. So make sure to share this out to all your friends. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. And of course, I am Michael Ramalli. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.